that most people would do a cooking video in their kitchen, but I'm not most people, plus my toddler is sleeping and my kitchen's a mess. And also, the pork shoulder that you're about to see started out as a pig that lived outside. So I figured, why not just do it outside on my porch, looking out at land that might have pigs on it someday? Actually, probably we will not have pigs out here because we rent, and I don't think our landlord would be very happy about pigs rooting around in the horse pasture, but we may have pigs someday when we buy our own land and get into the full homesteading deal. So the reason I'm doing this is because as we have moved towards cleaner, healthier living, we have figured out ways to make cooking and buying food easier. <laughs> and since we don't go to grocery stores anymore to buy our meat, this is about all that how to make it cost friendly and how to make a meal extend longer so you have more time. And so first I'm gonna show you the recipe and then I'm gonna tell you really the meaning behind all this. So this is the pork roast. It was about four pounds and this is the recipe that I found online. It's pretty simple. I've made it twice and it's pretty good. And you really can't mess it up. I don't even follow all of the specific ingredient amounts anymore. I just kind of add a little here and add a little there and it's turned out fine. They add a tablespoon of vegetable oil in this recipe as well. I don't tend to put much vegetable oil on my meats. I use coconut oil. That's what I cook with mostly or lard. So you add one half cup apple cider vinegar, one half cup chicken broth, which I'll say I have put other kinds of broth in. I don't think that really matters. They say one quarter cup brown sugar, but I just use coconut sugar a little bit of yellow mustard, some Worcestershire sauce. Did I say that right? Worcestershire, Worcestershire, Worcestershire? I don't know. A little bit of chili powder. They call for one tablespoon, but you can add as much as you want. One large onion, some garlic cloves, one and a half teaspoons of dried thyme. This is so simple. This is the other thing about, about making your own food and not getting takeout all the time, is that if you can make big meals, like a roast, then they last longer and you don't have to constantly be cooking. And also you just put them in a crock pot. <laughs> so you put all that stuff together, you got your rose sitting there for, I, I leave mine for seven or eight hours. This says five. I like it to be really tender. And so uh, I leave it for a longer and I just check on it. I, I don't think unless you leave it there for like 12 hours that you'll be disappointed, but that's just me. I'm no Betty Crocker. So these are the different meals that I was able to make from this one pork shoulder. First, there's the very traditional pork and sauerkraut. If you have German heritage, like I do, you could also make pork street tacos, which are very easy and very good. Also just put a little bit of it over some greens and you have a pork salad, which is quick and easy to make and very healthy. I also made a very easy tortilla soup. It's just basically got some beans, some broth, and some herbs in it and you add the pork to it with a little bit of avocado as a garnish maybe some onions and a little bit of cheese and it is very good you can also make pork quesadillas which i did here right after the pork taco and then of course everybody's favorite the barbecue pork sandwich i think that was six i believe that was six if it wasn't correct me in the comment section i'm a little tired my toddler's been getting up around 4 30 a.m every day so good thing that i remember to even turn the crock pot off but that's a great thing about crock pots they're really uh impossible to fail <laughs> with and i highly recommend getting a crock pot if you don't have one as you know, this channel is not like I'm an expert channel. It's a journey channel. It's about the changes we've made as we've gone from uh, people who just led a very conventional city life to people who are trying to gain independence from the system and meet our neighbors and buy food locally and support our local economy and be healthier because of that and just gain just gain uh, some more self-reliance and and eventually move towards hopefully full-time homesteading, whatever that means nowadays. And so as we have made that transition, of course, the first thing I did was like, I switched grocery stores, all right? So I went from sort of your conventional grocery store, this is when I'm still living in the city, go from the conventional grocery store to Whole Foods. And that was a big mistake because <laughs> the markup, if you just do a grocery store, even if the quality of food is sometimes a little bit better, it's a lot more expensive and it's hard to sustain as they call it whole paycheck, right? There's a reason they call it that way. 
So as I started getting more into this lifestyle, it became very clear that buying direct was the way to go. It brings down the cost significantly from the middleman in the grocery store. And you can do everything from buying cuts direct or you can buy half an animal, which we do both of those actually. Now the pork shoulder I'm going to show you in this video did not actually come from Owens Meats, which is a meat shop in Cleallum, Washington, where we used to live. It actually comes from Smoky Ridge Meats, which is Brent Olson, my friend's farm, uh, well, the Smoky Ridge Meats is his butcher shop where you go buy it in Chihuahua, Washington, but the pork, and he does grass-fed beef too, pastured pork, poultry. Um, actually, he doesn't do poultry, he does lamb. That all comes from Colville, Washington, which is about an hour from where we live in, in the northeast corner of Washington State. And Brent's awesome. We know Brent. We met Brent when we lived in Seattle. He sold at the Seattle Farmer's Market. And we moved out here just because of him. No, just kidding. We didn't. But it was awesome to be able to now just go direct to his shop and, and buy direct from him. He still drives to Seattle Farmer's Markets six hours every week to sell there. And, you know, what farmers have to do to try to find consumers these days who are interested in their goods is a video for another day because they're – the, especially these farmers that raise these animals such high quality, it's such good food. You'd think there'd be such a market for it, but they have to go far sometimes to find people like us. So it was really a blessing to move out here and, and now be much closer to the source of our food. Now that said, uh, you know, even Brent's pork is going to be more expensive than if you go to the grocery store, the conventional grocery store. And so you have to figure out ways to make food last so that you can balance your budget because we're living out uh, you know i don't have my six figure salary from television news and so i invest a lot of money uh nowadays for my money that i make online <laughs> right into just buying food for our family and so that's a great thing and actually americans for many many years um until re actually recently spent the majority of their family budget on food. But now that's very small. I think somewhere maybe in the 10 to 20 percent where it used to be 50 to 60 percent of a family budget went towards food. Food prices are are uh, so low. It's, it's a facade, as one farmer told me, the cost just gets burdened somewhere else. And I think with the rise of of chronic diseases, we've seen that we look at food as a long term investment for our family's health and for the environment and our local economy and our friends, really relationships. It's an investment in relationships and our friends and food security. And that's another video for a whole nother day. We don't really worry out here about supply chain issues and that kind of thing because we just drive over to our, our neighbor and we don't have to worry about packing houses, getting all backed up in uh, Iowa somewhere. And then a bunch of animals getting euthanized uh, because of that, and then the meat just goes to waste. Um, so we're we're very fortunate to have the situation that we're in right now, where some of the worries that other people are having, we don't have those worries, and this is one of the reasons why. Now that said, as I was saying, this pork is more expensive than you would get uh, at the grocery store. So this video is about making a pork shoulder last for six meals. And you could actually do a lot more than that, variety-wise. Depends on how many how many uh, mouths in your family that you're feeding. So there's just two adults and one child in our family right now. And so obviously we can make it last a little longer. This, this shoulder was probably four to five pounds. Anyway, I hope this was helpful and that these recipes look good enough for you to eat. And if you have other recipes for this, leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.